Today I'd like to continue our discussion of the book Undoing the Knots uh, by Maureen O'Connell. Uh, we're looking at chapter one uh, of uh, this book. Uh, chapter one is entitled Witnessing. It's about things that Maureen herself actually witnessed, particularly the terrible tragedy in Philadelphia uh, when the police uh, unfortunately uh, destroyed so many homes in the area in West Philadelphia and, and did an extensive amount of damage uh, in, in trying to <coughs> evict those who were involved in uh, the group MOVE. Uh, at this point in the chapter, Maureen is reflecting a little bit on uh, Catholicism and racism. And she notes some interesting things. Uh, the justice who wrote the majority opinion in the Dred Scott case, Justice Roger B. Taney, Roger was a Catholic. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, this case, which really uh, had so much impact, uh, you know, it was written by somebody who was a Catholic. Well, you might say, well, the whole point uh, of the case is to really, you know, articulate the law. Uh, but it's interesting uh, in terms of the faith perspective of, of the justice. Uh, also, uh, in the Plessy versus Ferguson case, Homer Plessy was a black Catholic. Uh, so here's somebody who is in the, the one hand, you know, handing down this terrible decision that had so many adverse consequences for black people. And he was a Catholic. And there's a, another fellow who was a Catholic who was trying to achieve uh, some sort of freedom and, and better situation for his people. Uh, and he was, again, the victim of an unfortunate decision. Uh, and so she speaks about racism uh, on page 30 of her book. She says that racism is an expression of power that dehumanizes and exploits. Uh, very interesting definition. Uh, let's take a look at that, unpack it a little bit. People always say, well, what is racism? <laughs> you know, uh, the term is thrown around very casually and, uh, well, this is racist. You're, you know, you're a racist person. This is an example of racism. Well, what exactly is racism? Uh, it is power that dehumanizes and exploits. Uh, and we can kind of discuss back and forth about uh, is there race, is there a white race, is there a black race? Uh, I mean, uh, in terms of the rather new, uh, uh, on the historical scene, the, the new development of these terms, and many biologists saying, of course, 99.9% .9 of the human beings are, you know, identical, so this idea of race is, is really, uh, uh, you know, uh, an, an idea that really is not uh, biologically uh, affirmed uh, as you look at the facts. But racism, uh, different than race uh, uh, as, a, as a term, it's really about power. Uh, and it's about dehumanizing a person and exploiting a person. Uh, and I think that's a very good benchmark uh, to look at racism. Other actions that dehumanize people. Other actions that exploit people. Uh, and, and sometimes it's connected with the idea that, well, you're black and we can do it to you because we're white, we're superior. Uh, and that would be certainly an obvious form of racism. But again, there, there are other subtle examples of racism where people are being dehumanized. People are being exploited. Uh, and these are things that, that we have to obviously fight against to make our world uh, more just. Uh, and a, a lot of times, uh, Maureen reflects, you know, this racism that uh, she grew up with, uh, that she basically accepted, uh, this dehumanization uh, of certain peoples, like, uh, you know, Father brought her to this, uh, terrible incident in Philadelphia. She saw it. She was sitting on a, standing on a picnic table, looking at the, the fire. And, but she was sealed, she says, behind a wall of racism. So there was like this wall around her. Uh, and many of us get sealed behind the wall 
level of racism. We don't even realize that the behavior is in any way racist. You know, we have this wall around us. We don't see the exploitation. You know, we see maybe the, the physical reality, well, there's a the fire there, the homes are being burned, it's terrible. But we don't see, well, the exploitation that went on there, the dehumanization. Uh, some people who were in positions of power thought it was okay to do this, that it was okay to, uh, you know, drop this uh, fire-creating uh, mechanism right in, in these homes, you know, where, boom, if they went on fire, wow, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, this is, we don't treat people like this, we don't burn their homes, this is not what we do. We try other ways to uh, enforce the law. And we see it many times in a police shooting. Well, you know, this person was unarmed. This person was stopped for, uh, you know, a traffic violation. Uh, this person, is, in the case of Eric Garner, was selling loose cigarettes. I mean, you know, is this something you want to take a person's life for? And certainly, I'm sure it wasn't the intention of the police uh, personnel, uh, but, but it led to that. And why are we sealed behind this wall? Are we just blind because this wall is up around us and we don't even realize the wall is up around us? And that's what Maureen is hinting at. Um, she speaks about lopping, locking ourselves in an upper room of whiteness. Uh, and it's interesting expression. Uh, the upper room, of course, is a sacred place for us, uh, for us as, you know, Christians. The upper room where Jesus celebrated the Last Supper, so it's a, a room where we would celebrate Eucharist. But do we just kind of lock ourselves in this upper room and surround ourselves with whiteness? And do we ever reflect on the fact, as we look around, you know, why are our congregations so white? I mean, it's a pretty obvious question, <laughs> you know, when you look around, well, you know, our, our society isn't all white. Our society is diverse. Why aren't our congregations more diverse? And does it upset us that our congregations are not more diverse? Or are we just happy and content locking ourselves in this upper room of whiteness and saying, yeah, that's the way it is. You know, we don't even attend to it. You know, and, and so we get locked in. And this is the way we grew up. This is the way our parents grew up. This is the way their parents, and this is, you know, what's the matter with it? Is there anything wrong with it? I mean, this is just the way it is. This is the reality uh, of our lives. But yet we don't look at it and say, well, wait a minute. Why am I doing this? Why am I locking myself in this upper room of whiteness? <laughs>